welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to discuss about two important joints in the angle and foot complex biomechanics that is the sub talar joint and later the transverse talar joint we will examine the proximal distal articular surface of this joint the ligaments of this joint and a very brief description about the specialities of each of this joint so let us explore about the subtalar and transverse tarsal joint in detail yes the first joint is the subtalar joint the word itself is self explanatory subtalar means below the talus below the talus what you have you have the calcaneum so you have the calcaneum here you have the talus over here so this will be a joint relating two of this bones that is a talus and the calcaneum so this joint is also known as talo calcaneal joint what is that talo calcaneal joint this all are simple anatomy and i wish to inform you that our peculiar discussion in this channel would be in a manner we first grasp the anatomy of relevant joint in detail and later on we develop the concept in biomechanics because i feel that much of us uh, many of us think that the biomechanics is a tough subject especially because we don't have a strong anatomical explanation or anatomical foundation so linking anatomy to the biomechanics we will study the joint structure and function later pure biomechanics of the joint struct function as well as pathomechanics will be dealt and we have the angle complex a peculiarity that is we have various joints and large number of joints individually if you study the function we cannot understand the whole integrated function of the complex so we will be studying function of each of this joint at the end of our discussion of each of this joints anatomy sorry for that just for your information so this is a subtalar joint and it is a joint between the talus and the calcaneum so we call it as a talo calcaneal joint right let us examine the joint it is happening between the body of the talus right you have the body of the talus anteriorly you have the head you have the body of the talus okay uh, this one is the body and here you have what articulation the tibia and the fibular articulation like this need not worry about that okay right it is happening between the body of the talus as well as the body of calcaneum so we are expanding our concept we found out that it is a joint between talus and calcaneum we are expanding ourselves that it is a joint between the body of the talus and the body of the calcaneum right body of the talus superior inferiorly and body of the calcaneum superiorly right now we have a peculiarity of this joint before that let me ask you what type of joint is this this joint is a composite joint what do you mean by a composite or a compound joint it means that there are various or when different number of articular surfaces not just one for example your knee complex you have three articular surfaces medial and lateral femoral condyles medial and lateral tibial condyles whereas in shoulder you just have one articular surface so here you have three articular surface oh my god two itself is tough to understand and what will we do with the three need not worry we will do it in simple manner we have three articular surfaces or articular areas in this talo calcaneal joint what are that can you have any guess from this picture this includes an anterior articulation a middle articulation and a posterior articulation what are that it includes an anterior articulation it includes a middle or a medial articulation and finally at the end you have a posterior articulation i think that is simple because this lies anteriorly so this is the anterior articulation this is in the middle so we call it middle articulation and this is at the end we call it a posterior articulation and we see that the posterior articulation is having the largest articular surface 
the posterior articulation is having the largest articular surface followed by anterior and the middle articulations right now let us examine in detail about this articular surface because once we understand about the articular surface we can find out the biomechanics we can find out the function right we see that the posterior articulation is actually between convex end or body convex facet on the calcaneum convex facet on calcaneum with a concave facet on talus see the articulation the posterior one is actually between a convex one in the calcaneum and a concave one in the uh, which one that is the talus the concave one in the talus so here what is the articulation that is convex and concave or you can tell concave on convex talus is resting on the which one the calcaneum so you can tell it as a concave on a convex right yes now let's see if this is the same one or not okay when we look at this we find out that it is like a concave on talus sorry calcaneum and convex on talus the exact opposite that is here you have a convex one on the talus and correspondingly concave on the calcaneum at the middle also you have something almost like that okay see so that is at this joint this is convex this is concave this is convex this is concave this is concave this is convex so can you find out a pattern you find that we find that here the articular surfaces in both this is having a peculiar orientation that is convex on concave we can apply our rule okay but here you can see that it is concave on convex see the difference so between these three articular areas there is in fact a huge difference we are lucky that we have only two differences that if middle was something different it would have complicated us but see uh, for our I think for making our study easy or for us to be uh, more easy with the studies we have anterior and middle with same articulation and posterior with a different articulation so you see the difference so what can we predict from this pattern the articular surface in both ends of these joints are different that means the arthrokinematics that is going to occur in the both bones will be different or in this articular areas will be different is that going to confuse the joint or is that they're going to make the joint complicated yes that is why we have the subtalar joint motions are difficult to want to understand because anterior and middle part there will be a peculiar motion but whereas posteriorly we might have a different one i'm not going to confuse with uh, de describing about the motions right now because we will discuss the motion separately but i want to give you this hints because this hints is going to help you master the function help you to ex examine and understand the function more easily so let us summarize that we see in this joint that anterior and middle is having one articulation and the reverse happens in the posterior one right the reverse happens in the posterior remember that don't forget that that's something important to be the with the subtalar joint now when we examine further we see a structure that we need to remember in the subtalar joint that is having some more biomechanical significance that is the tarsal canal not the tarsal tunnel we have over here this is tarsal canal or we can even call it as sinus tarsi and we have a sim syndrome like a sinus tarsi syndrome or tarsal canal syndrome which is a clinical entity which we won't discuss here maybe we will discuss in the pathomechanics in the end of this chapter right so what is the sinus tarsi or tarsal canal it is a funnel shaped canal you know that this is the funnel shaped canal okay this is a funnel shaped canal and it is oblique in orientation this is relatively horizontal so it is a funnel shaped canal with an oblique orientation where is it located it is located between anterior and middle and the posterior articulation so somewhat over here you have this canal a small canal over here right like this 
and obliquely oriented and obliquely oriented funnel shaped canal existing between your anterior and middle and the posterior or anteromedial and andromedial and the posterior compartments or posterior articulation between this joint so what it does is actually if we take a cross-sectional view of this joint like this okay this funnel shaped canal will be lining like this okay will be passing like this okay here you have the fibular end or the lateral end here you have the medial end or tibial end so this larger area or larger circumference part of this canal is what we call more correctly a sinus tarsi sinus tarsi is at the lateral end is at the lateral end or near the fibula or near the fibula okay whereas it's a posterior end or the smallest part is posterior to the tibia that means you have here your tibia you have here your fibula but this is lying posterior to the tibia so it is going backwards that means this is going to divide this joint into two cavities that means it separates the andromedial or anterior and medial you have your anterior here you have your medial here you have your posterior here okay or more clearly for your understanding let us make it anterior medial and posterior okay so you can see that this tarsal canal is going to divide your articular surface into two that is it is not allowing the communication between both of that so what does it mean both of these articular surfaces will behave individually both of these articular surface will behave individually and this one will accelerate that this reciprocal concave is concave concavity will accelerate that that means your posterior compartment or posterior articular surface in the subtalar joint might differ from the anterior and medial that is because of this articulation reciprocal one as well as this tarsal canal so it won't allow the communication so the posterior one will have its own joint capsule the posterior one will have its own joint capsule Whereas the anterior and medial has a complete one joint capsule, which also includes the next joint that is a transverse tarsal joint. So it will include the transverse tarsal joint or the tars transverse tarsal joint. All right? Transverse tarsal joint include tarsal uh, joint between the navicular bone, uh, joint bone and the uh, joint between the cuboid, talonavicular and talocuboid joints. Okay? right no need to worry about that much so that we we need to understand here that the posterior one has its own joint capsule whereas anterior and medial has one joint capsule which also surrounds or completely covers the tarsal joint transverse tarsal joint so i want to tell you that ultimately what we find out from this discussion is that your subtalar joint has some difference our subtalar joint has some differences which is not seen in any other parts of the body for example you had the knee joint in embryonic stage you had two joint capsules but when we started on weight bearing it became one we studied that plica syndrome do you remember that yes and but here you see that this is existing throughout the lifetime and making this joint a complicated one but don't worry we will simplify this joint and we'll study it in the most easiest manner in the upcoming discussion right yes that's good and here we have or we see that 80 percentage or 70 to 80 percentage of the weight bearing is through your posterior compartment or posterior articular surface only the 30 percentage is through anterior but for our astonishment the posterior one i told you that it is the largest one you see remember the stick that i placed here yes so when it is larger it can get on to more stress and strain so the pressure in that joint may not increase okay it would be same between the tarsals uh, anterior and posterior and middle that means ultimately even though weight bearing is more in this aspect since it is having greater surface area the force can dissipate easily easily and ultimately the stress in each of these joints is almost same and that makes this joint one of the less degenerated ones in the body degeneration is very less common unless there is a fracture of course in the sinus tarsi compartment or tarsal canal you can have some degenerations okay right yes
And now let us examine the rest of the aspects of this joint, which includes the capsule, which we have already discussed the peculiarity of the capsule to individual capsules. And then we need to discuss about the ligaments of this joints. Uh, you know that uh, the ligaments actually, you see this, this all are closely related to each other. So the ligaments in this joint do help in the stability of this joint too. So we have the ligaments like the first one is the common ligament that we studied in the previous joint that is the ankle joint or tarocrural. In the lateral collateral ligament complex we have anterior and posterior tibiofibular and calcaneofibular ligament. So here we have the help of calcaneofibular ligament which is the ligament the calcaneofibular ligament and that is the one that I have shown here like this the calcaneofibular ligament right yes very good. The second ligament that we need to remember is what is this joint? It is a subtalar, not that, the talocalcaneal. So we have talocalcaneal ligament. Talocalcaneal ligament. Why did I leave some space over here? That is interosseous talocalcaneal ligament. Interosseous talocalcaneal ligament. And the same name we have one another ligament that is a talocalcaneal ligament that is a lateral talocalcaneal ligament. See that it is easy. You just have to remember what are the bonds that is related to this one and you can just figure out that's what talocalcaneofibular ligament. Don't study this by heart, okay? Inter interosseous talocalcaneal ligament and lateral talocalcaneal ligament. And finally one more ligament which you might need to remember that is the cervical ligament. Oh my god. Why did I tell about the cervical region over here? That is because this is a ligament that attached to neck of the talus and neck of the calcaneum. So neck to neck we call it as in the cervical ligament. So this is the cervical ligament. And this one, the oblique one that I shown here, between both this joint a bonds is the interosseous talocalcaneal ligament. Right? What is this? This would be your medial collateral ligament or the deltoid ligament. So this is your tibia, this is your talus, this is your fibula, this is calcaneum. And you just have to remember all these bonds. Talus and calcaneum, you will have talocalcaneal ligament, which can be interosseous talocalcaneal and lateral talocalcaneal. And you can have your cervical ligament bringing together both the necks of this bone. In fact, truly, the body of the talus and the neck of the talus is the one that is articulating with the calcaneum. Okay, you just have to remember that. And then you have the calcaneofibular ligament which is linking your calcaneum to the fibula. And even this, your cervical ligament is the most strongest one and your cervical ligament is the most strongest one. That's all about the which joint? The subtalar joint. Okay, always remember and never forget the axis or the articulation differences and the sinus starts your tarsal canal which divides the joint into two parts all right yes let's now move on to the next joint that is the transverse tarsal joint now we are going to look into the transverse tarsal joint the transverse tarsal joints are very simple to study actually nothing to remember like the subtalar joint see this one is a transverse tarsal joint what is that actually it is a joint formed between your talus and the navicular, that is the talonavicular joint and a joint formed between calcaneum and cuboid, that is a calcaneum cuboid joint. Earlier I told you that this was a talocuboid, uh, talo sorry, sorry for that. It's actually calcaneum cuboid joint. So the joints include the two joints, that is a talonavicular joint, talonavicular joint and calcaneum cuboid joint. What is that? The talonavicular joint and calcaneocuboid joint. Let us compare these joints and learn them. So that's easy for us, right? Yes, the words are self-explanatory. Talonavicular joint means it is a joint between the talus and the navicular, right? It is a joint between the talus and the navicular bone. When we examine, we see that it is between the head of the talus, okay? Anterior end of the head of the talus with the posterior end of the navicular bone posterior end of the navicular bone so we are developing our concept like this so that includes first we told that it is between talus and navicular now we study that it is between head of the talus and the navicular bone right yes 
if you look at closely you can see that the head of the talus is like a convex shaped the head of the talus is convex shaped here the navicular bone is concave shaped right so you can tell it like convex or concave but it is a bit more complicated than that oh my god what is that actually you know that uh, the taronavicular joint is existing in the anterior part but below this and posteriorly we have the other joints like the subtalar joint which include anterior and middle talo calcaneal joint right anterior and middle talo calcaneal joint and we saw that the talo calcaneal joint anterior and middle plus this talo navicular joint is having a single joint capsule a single joint capsule earlier in our discussion on subtalar joint we saw that that subtalar joints joint capsule that to specifically anterior and middle anterior and middle was related to transverse tarsal joint but we are developing it again in the transverse tarsal joint it is completely related to only the talo navicular joint only the talo navicular joint so all three of these joints has a, a single joint capsule so we are developing a concept all three of these joints has a single joint capsule what makes talus different is that if the talus is sorry if the talus is having a shape like this it is articulated in the anterior end with the cuboid okay with the navicular here it is articulated with the calcaneum so definitely it has one two three and four articulations among this the fourth one that is is not to be considered because that is entirely a different articulation but this three are having a common joint capsule this three are having a common joint capsule so when we examine it this is a picture in which your talus is removed and we are looking from the superior view when talus is removed what we see is there is a concave depression a socket there is a concave depression or a bucket like socket to which your talus is been put like this talus a concave one is put as like a ball in the socket oh my god that's ball and socket yes that is something similar to the ball and socket joint that you have here your humeral head is kept into the glenoid cavity like this similar to that here you have a concave socket into which your talus is kept so this joint is more than a convex concave it is actually what a ball and socket type of joint it is behaving like a ball and socket one right let us see how that concave cavity is created i just told you it is created but how is it created let us see that that's simple this diagram it is quite evident but i want you to understand it some more in depth so let us look at for example we have your cuboid over here sorry now we can always it's cuboid no it's navicular man it's navicular over here yes the concavity of the navicular first concavity then the medial end this is the medial end this is the lateral end because cuboid is in the lateral end okay you have the medial collateral ligament or your deltoid ligament medial end right you don't have to worry about the lateral collateral ligament because that's actually after this bone here you have the cuboid after that only okay but here you have a ligament known as a bifurcate ligament which is having a shape like this a bifurcate ligament over here and you see this one of the aspect the medial aspect of the bifurcate ligament is in fact concave so another concavity so concavity 1 concavity 2 concavity 3 is that enough is that enough posteriorly is there some concavity or inferiorly is there some concavity yes because do you remember i told you earlier the subtalar joint the talus is sitting is talus is convex here also talus is convex and calcaneum is concave we remembered like this x c x c and here c x opposite right that means your calcaneum is concave in your anterior socket and post middle socket so you have here anterior socket of the calcaneum which is concave another socket of the calcaneum which is convex concave so definitely this becomes like a pit into which i can simply place my talus so the talus can sit something like a mortis talar mortis it can sit something like this inside that see so that means the end of the talus is like a ball the head of the talus is like a ball it's convex 
it will be like a ball so it will sit on to this so here you have the medial collateral ligament here you have the bifurcate ligament here you have okay i will show you like this okay here you have the medial collateral ligament more understanding medial collateral ligament bifurcate ligament here you have the concavity of the which one the navicular bone and here you have your anterior and middle sockets of your subtalar bone subtalar you can understand because that it is below the talus we are talking about the talus so we remove the talus we see all that concavity is like the anterior the middle the deltoid the concavity of the navicular bone and bifurcate ligament and that makes the biomechanics of the subtalar joint not the subtalar transverse talus joint in that peculiarly in that peculiarly the talo navicular joint it makes something special special that is it behaves like a ball and socket one remember that that's going to help you to understand the coming discussion that's all about the transverse tarsal joint biomechanics or anatomy whereas we have a small joint over here calcaneo cubit should can we forget about that no 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 calcaneo cubit where is it yes here you have the calcaneo cubit joint and when we look into the joint cavity we see that it is formed by the anterior end of the calcaneum and posterior end of the cuboid so it is formed by anterior end of the calcaneum you can simply guess it anterior end of the calcaneum and posterior end of the cuboid when we examine it closely once again we see that that surfaces are something like this that surface are something like this that means those surfaces are reciprocally concave on base and or one part is concave another part is convex here it is concave here it is convex opposite to each other so that makes the biomechanics or joint function a difficult one so that is a different one right not just like ball and socket there is no exact concretion one side it is concave another side it is convex one side it is concave another side it is opposite in direction something like a bicondylar type right something like a bicondylar type so that will differentiate the biomechanics or motion of the calcaneo cuboid joint so that's the general introduction about the calcaneo cuboid joint and this one now we need to remember about the ligaments in this joints right we have in, uh, compared each and study it actually we should study talo navicular then calcaneo cuboid but i felt that we can compare it and study that it is easy okay now let us see about the ligaments the ligaments are also simple no need to worry because already we have studied few ligaments like the talo navicular okay it is related to medial collateral ligament or the deltoid ligament deltoid ligament right it is related to the bifurcate ligament it is related to the bifurcate ligament then something most important here do you remember i have drawn a blank space i actually forgot to mention that i'm sorry for that actually that is like your calcaneum is here your navicular is here in between that there is a space that space is covered by a ligament that is in the lower part or the inferior in the plantar aspect that ligament is known as the spring ligament oh god spring ligament that is very important for your medial arch maintaining your medial arch that is a spring ligament so this concavity is actually created by medial collateral ligament uh, the bifurcate ligament concavity of the navicular bone the concavity of anterior concavity of middle and in between that a major portion by your spring ligament so spring ligament also contribute to your concavity creation or socket creation okay so that is a spring ligament that is here the next ligament is the spring ligament and that is quite important one right that's got important one and then you have dorsal talo navicular ligament dorsal talo navicular ligament it's not much important and this one also gets the support from the ligaments of the subtalar joint also okay so this two ligaments we have already discussed and we want to focus about the spring ligament what is spring ligament the spring ligament is a ligament that is spanning between calcaneum and what you want the navicular so it is actually attached between the posterior part of the navicular to a structure in the calcaneum a projection in the calcaneum this is known as sustentaculum talli what is that it is known as sustentaculum talli so that is spanning between both this 
that is spanning between this in the plantar aspect that is your spring ligament so your spring ligament is a very important ligament which makes the concavity or socket and it spans between inferior or posterior part of your navicular bone posterior inferior part of your navicular bone into the which one into the sustentaculum tali of your calcaneum into the sustentaculum calli further the spring ligament is here it is related to your medial collateral ligament or deltoid ligament and here it is continuous with the bifurcate ligament so it is medially continuous with the bifurcate ligament laterally continuous with the sorry medially continuous with the medial collateral ligament or deltoid ligament and laterally continuous with the bifurcated so spring ligament it arises from the sustentaculum tali and it's inserted into the inferior navicular bone inferior navicular bone it is related to medial collateral ligament or the deltoid ligament medially laterally it is related to your bifurcate ligament bifurcate ligament this is very quite important ligament too because this has a very crucial role in the function of talonavicular joint as well as subtalar joint and even in maintaining your arch and finally recent study shows that it is divided off it is made up of three different portions it is made up of three different portions guess which are the three bands three portions they include supromedial bands if you know need to if you don't want to study on this you don't have to okay actually for you if, if you are interested just learn this that is a supromedial band uh infraplantar band infraplantar band and medio plantar band medio plantar band your band medio plantar one is an oblique one this is a longitudinal one so your spring ligament is made up of a supromedial portion a band and inframedial plantar infraplantar portion which infraplantar means downside it is a longitudinal one whereas a medio plantar one which is an oblique one that's just for you to remember about this uh, medial collateral ligament sorry the spring ligament so what are the ligaments in the talonavicular joint so, sorry calcaneocuboid joint can you guess the, the ligaments in the calcaneocuboid joint it is uh, related to you know that you have a bifurcate ligament it has a medial band and it has a lateral band the lateral band of the bifurcate ligament medial band is related to this one okay the lateral band of the bifurcate ligament then what is this bone calcaneum cuboid so linking that calcaneo cuboid ligament to calcaneo cuboid dorsal top post dorsal calcaneo cuboid inferiorly inferior calcaneo cuboid ligament or inferior plantar calcaneo cuboid ligament so the ligaments include the lateral band of the bifurcate ligament dorsal calcaneo cuboid ligament inferior calcaneo cuboid ligament and one more ligament most important long plantar ligament long plantar ligament here the ligament which was important is a spring ligament but here it is a long plantar ligament because it is actually long it is cal running from the calcaneum to the cuboid and then even to the second third and fourth metatarsal so that is a long ligament and you see that that is in the lateral aspect here you have the spring ligament so this is important to maintain your lateral longitudinal arch which one long plantar ligament and lateral stability to the foot complex so if we are summarizing the ligaments in the calcaneo cuboid joints are very simple you just have to remember the names calcaneo cuboid top most upper most you have the dorsal calcaneo cuboid inferiorly you have the inferior calcaneo cuboid or plantar inferior means plantar surface of plantar okay and then you have one more ligament that is a long plantar ligament here you have a uncommon ligament common, uh, not a common ligament that is a spring ligament others are related to that one okay so that is a spring ligament here it's a long plantar ligament and it's of course related to your bifurcate ligament so that's all about your subtalar joints and versus transverse tarsal joint which include talonavicular talo and calcaneo cuboid joint i want to tell you that the subtalar joint we saw that uh, it is having a different capsule three different varieties of articulations actually anterior medial and posterior but we see that during weight bearing position the anterior part of the subtalar joint the middle part and the posterior part which we thought that it is a different joint and the talonavicular joint all are behaving as a one joint am i going to confuse you 
yes it's a bit confusing but that's what we are going to explore in the upcoming videos where we discuss about the subtalar joint what happens in the weight bearing position in the subtalar joint if you want an answer stay tuned with this channel and if you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe to the channel